So if you were a child of the 90s or the early 2000s, I'm sure you are familiar with Airbud. He was a freaking dog who could play basketball. If you don't know, the Airbud movies are essentially golden retriever-led sports films, which are not to be confused with the Air Buddies, which are a spin-off involving Airbud's children doing a variety of whatever the hell this is. Let her rip. <laughs> Then there's the Santa Paws, which is the same setup as the Buddies, except they are Santa's dogs during Christmas, which is not to be confused with the Airbud production company, which makes terrible, terrible dog-led movies. Even if you don't know who Airbud is, I'm sure you kind of know who he is, because Disney was running promos like it was nobody's freaking business. Tonight on Disney, find out why MVP stands for Most Valuable Pooch in Airbud. Catch Disney Channel's premiere of Airbud Golden Receiver. Buddy's back. And this time he's got a brand new goal, soccer. Be sure to catch Disney Channel's premiere of Air Bud 3 World Pop. Brand new adventure in Air Bud 7th Inning Fetch. Coming to Disney DVD and video this summer. Hey! The premiere of Disney's Air Bud Spikes Bad. Monday at 8, 7 central on Disney Channel. There's so much media surrounding Air Bud. There's so much extended lore about the character that it really does feel like the Air Bud cinematic universe. And I've been a fan of Air Bud for a very long time, so it feels like my duty to share my love with you. It feels like it's my duty to share the history with you. So let's begin our journey through the ABCU. Chapter one, who is Air Bud? In the summer of 1989, Kevin DeChico was on vacation with his family when he came across a stray golden retriever. Yeah, that's right. Airbud had humble roots, y'all. This golden retriever was covered in dirt, he was covered in blood, and it was very clear that he had not been fed in a very long time. So while on vacation, DeChico decided to house the dog and feed the dog and play with the dog. As the trip was coming to an end, DeChico felt too bad to abandon the dog again or leave him on the streets. So he did the only thing he could think to do, which was kidnap Airbud. Nah, I'm just kidding. He actually placed like found dog flyers everywhere, like around the neighborhood, all this around area, but nobody called, so I guess that nobody cared about Airbud. DeChico named the dog Buddy, and the two of them became lifelong friends ever since. A star was born, if you will. DeChico was a big fan of basketball, and one day while he was playing basketball, he noticed that Airbud had a fascination with the ball. One day while he was playing, Airbud ran in and hit the ball with his nose, and DeChico very quickly realized that he could capitalize off of this, so he began to toss the dog the ball over and over again until he could score a basket. It took four months and about 6,000 attempts to actually sink a single basket. So it says a lot about not giving up. He was teaching him how to do soccer. He was teaching him how to do basketball and football and according to his Wikipedia page, frickin' hockey. In my mind, I immediately pictured like a dog holding a hockey stick in his mouth and like running around and like whipping it. Uh, but according to the existing footage, he just stands in front of the goal and blocks the puck, which is boring. Airbud's first appearance on TV was in 1992 in an episode of America's Funniest Home Videos where he can be seen showing off his snoot skitball skills. <laughs> Can I get the master bedroom tonight? I don't know if anyone remembers this, but AFV used to do that thing where they would be like, what's the funniest like video of the episode? And then the in-studio audience would like vote on whatever the funniest was. According to Airbud's literal biography, which is called Go Buddy, their video was chosen in like the top three of the funniest. And when it came to voting, they only got second place. And Airbud's owner goes on to say that he felt very burned by this. It was the same year that Airbud was invited onto David Letterman to show off his basketball skills there. Kevin DeChico. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Nice to see you. DeChico. All right, good to see you here. Wow. Man. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Boy, this is some dog, and that's, uh, what is it? That's a golden uh, golden, retriever. golden retriever. Of course, yes. that's like the, the most popular dog now. Yeah, it's a very lovable dog. Yeah, very and uh, what's his name? Dude? Oh, Bud. 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 Say, sure. Buddy. Okay. How old is this dog? Bud's almost five. Uh -huh. And uh, what are you guys going to do? Well, he's going to shoot baskets on a regulation size rim. Really? The dog yeah. is going to shoot baskets? Yeah. All right, music. Can we have music for this? Well, that's right. Drum roll. Uh, just drum roll. Okay, the point. Okay, here we go. So drum roll is Buddy and Kevin. Uh, this, 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 this. Hey, sit. What? Up. Oh! Higher. 
It didn't take very long for Airbud to become a sensation. I think especially in the 90s where anything like slightly out of the norm was blown out of proportion. Kind of like gay people, I don't know. Suddenly, everybody wanted Airbud on their TV show. There were entire news segments dedicated to Airbud and his abilities and his relationship with his owner. Won't you welcome Airbud the Wonder Dog? <laughs> You never want to use a real hard basketball because, quite honestly, it won't work. It needs to be a little soft, so when you give it a pass at the dog... Here. The big thing you've been working on with him, though, is catching a football. Yeah, Todd, it, it, quite honestly, it happened accidentally about two months ago. We were playing hockey, just working on his trick. He found a football in the bushes. But what he is actually doing is biting at it as well as jumping at the same time. That is what gives it elevation. He goes off on the snap count and catches a football like this. It's like a, a winning touchdown drive. He was even invited to be on Full House in an episode where they're making fun of Uncle Jesse for being bad at basketball. Okay, Comet, this isn't as hard as Jesse makes it look. Okay, all you have to do, just get ready, aim, and shoot. In Airbud's biography, his owner says that his dressing room was right next to the Olsen twins, which is amazing. Apparently, Airbud was doing halftime shows for the Lakers and for different, like, basketball people. I don't know anything about that, but apparently it happened. After seeing Airbud's skills and seeing his growing star power, a lot of major studios wanted to capitalize off of it, and they wanted to make a movie about a Doug who could play freaking basketball. And you've got a movie coming up, apparently, is that it? Well, we've got a project we're putting together right now. It's in the writing stages. It'll be an inspirational kids movie about a boy and a dog. And so, in 1997, years into Airbud's career, the first Airbud movie was officially released. Chapter 2. Airbud. The movie. So, the Airbud movie is about a dog who is owned by an abusive circus clown. At the beginning of the movie, the clown is like trying to entertain the children, but like everybody just hates everything he does. But Airbud is a star. Airbud can like catch a ball many times. Airbud is being abused by this clown because the clown is jealous that Airbud has more star quality. And so he like threatens to like hit the dog and like send the dog to the frickin' pound or whatever. You're going to the pound, you hear me? And so while they're driving back from one of these parties, Airbud slips out of the back of the truck and is sitting in the middle of the frickin' road. Out of nowhere, a car whips out and slams into Airbud and he's murdered. No, I'm just kidding. So this is where we meet our main character whose name is Josh. And he's very, very depressed, and not just because of his bowl cut. He's very sad because his father recently passed away, and the justification in the movie is that he died in a plane crash. I know that the only people who are gonna care about this detail are people who are trash in the year 2013, but this child actor actually grows up to play Alec in the City of Bones movie. You think that this family crashing into Airbud is gonna be the catalyst of the film, and that they're gonna pick up the dog and they're gonna adopt him, but actually they just abandon him in his clown outfit in the middle of the street. Street. Josh begins playing basketball at this abandoned church type place, and while he's playing, he notices that there are signs that Airbud is lingering out in the wilderness. One of these signs is like part of the clown outfit, like ripped up. One day while Josh is playing basketball, Airbud reveals himself and then reveals that he can dunk like a pro. <laughs> So Josh decides he's going to kidnap Airbud, bring him into his house, and torture him through various methods. It's a little bit uncomfortable watching this because I know that this movie was made in the 90s where animals weren't considered real, and I feel like they really were abusing the dog in these scenes. According to Airbud's autobiography, his owner said that he was 100% in the movie. He did all the stunts, he did everything for the movie, like there were no other dogs that were playing Airbud, but I also think that that's a blatant freaking lie. I have a golden retriever, and I know what golden retrievers look like, and I feel like I noticed their differences in coloring and face, and when I look at footage of actual Airbud, he has a very specific face and he has a very specific coat. And by specific coat, I mean the real Airbud just kind of looks like dirty and gross. But there are some scenes where all of a sudden there's like a lighter color, 
like sexier, like younger looking golden retriever doing stunts. And I don't think that's the real Airbud. I'm under the impression that they wanted Airbud to seem like he was the only dog in the movie and that he's like a prodigy, but I think they used multiple dogs in this movie. And I don't know why they try to freaking hide it from us. I think the true brilliance of the movie is that you'll just be watching and it will be super normal. And then all of a sudden there will be a shot like this. Guess who's back everybody? The evil clown is back. Josh. No! You immediately get really worried about how they're gonna find Airbud because like it's the 90s. How are they gonna find where the dog is or where the clown lives? Cause they can't like dox him on the internet. But it doesn't matter. He just like walks down the street in the next scene and grabs the dog and leaves. I feel like I need to clear up a misconception about the freaking Airbud movie because this has been driving me crazy for years. People say, imagine how it would feel to be the kid who got cut from the basketball team so they could make room for a golden retriever. And I just have to say this right now, Airbud is never on the freaking basketball team. Do you even know your Airbud lore? You clearly freaking don't, bitch. I think it's funny to say bitch because like dog, you know what I'm saying? Airbud is never on the team. What actually happens is, is that in the big final game or whatever the frick, one of their team members gets hurt, they're down a player, and then they begin to miserably lose to the competition. However, Airbud, who was abandoned like 10 minutes earlier, he like knew that it was time to save the day. So he runs in all stoically and they dress him up like in a uniform and he joins the team as the fifth member. There is an in-universe explanation explanation about why Airbud is allowed to join the team because everyone that was watching was thinking about like logic and the rules. According to the rule book, there is nothing that says a dog cannot play on the team. And so that's the explanation and then Airbud's on the freaking team. But you won't find anything in there that says a dog can't play. He's right! Ain't no rules that the dog can't play basketball. The rule book also doesn't say anything about punching your freaking opponent in the freaking throat. As expected, Airbud absolutely freaking dunks on everybody, and then the Timberwolves win. Yay! You think that the movie is gonna end with the Timberwolves winning the championship, but since this movie is a subversive masterpiece, it actually ends with a courtroom custody battle over Airbud. They decide the only way they can truly decide custody of the animal is to put him in the middle of a circle with the two people on opposite ends and whoever he goes to will be his rightful owner. And that's actually what happened with my parents' divorce. My parents aren't divorced, I don't know why I said that. Airbud obviously runs to the Fram family and I cry. This movie is one of my favorites of all time because it is hilarious, the story is really heartfelt, and it's like pure 90s. But let's take a look at what the critics have to say about the movie. So Dylan L who is a super reviewer, he said, it's a movie about a dog that plays basketball. What else do I have to say? Interestingly enough, my review is the exact same, except I give it a five star, so that's confusing. Homegirl Maria Garcia said, Airbud may be bland, but it's also offensive. I don't know what she thinks is offensive, but I think the only thing offensive is that picture. Oh, I feel bad saying that. She looks delightful. I'm sorry, Maria. Mike Clark said that the movie was dull, but harmless. But didn't that other bitch say that it was offensive? When the Airbud movie came out, a lot of the critics thought that the movie was very stupid and poorly made, but it actually grew quite an audience with children and with families. Airbud grossed a total of $27.8 million at the box office and was considered a success by Disney, who was a money-hungry Snake. Airbud very quickly became a 90s legend, even getting nominated for a Kids' Choice Award in 1998 for Favorite Animal Star. I started watching clips from the 1998 Kids' Choice Awards, and it's the most 90s thing you'll ever see. First of all, Rosie O'Donnell is hosting, and I don't know why she was ever given that gig, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> Airbud was nominated against the likes of like the whale from Free Willy. The nominations for favorite animal star. Well, first off, we got Buddy <laughs> from Airbud. There wasn't a crowd that he couldn't please. 
And there's Willie from Free Willie 3 who swam the seven seas. <laughs> and uh, Mouse Hunt had the crazy mouse who ate a lot of tooth. And of course, there was Sabrina's cat, Salem. She's after all his queens. Oh, good luck. See you Peace. Guys. I was super excited to see Airbud win, but unfortunately he lost to the cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. May your favorite animal star appear right here. At this point, Airbud was at the top of his game. He had done TV, he had done late night, he'd broken into the film industry and had a box office success. It felt like there was nothing that could stop Airbud. Chapter 3. Airbud died. So Airbud died, y'all. In 1997, after the filming of the first movie, Airbud got very, very sick and he had to get his right hind leg amputated. According to his biography, he had synovial cell sarcoma. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I can assume that it's bad enough for you need to get your freaking leg amputated. According to Airbud's biography, the distribution rights for the film were stuck between Miramax and Disney. Miramax was planning to use the amputation as something empowering that they were going to include in all of the merchandising and all of the interviews and all of the press, whereas Disney wanted to cover up the amputation, they wanted to cover up Airbud's illness so then they could launch a franchise. It would be like if Hannah Montana was in an accident and lost her left arm, and instead of like trying to explain to the children, children about why she only has one arm, they just decided to recast the role. Disney was the one that ended up getting the distribution rights for the film. In Airbud's biography, his owner says that they had a look-alike golden retriever walk the red carpet, and I've tried to find the footage, but it doesn't exist because it was the 90s, and I don't think anyone thought to DVR that. However, news of Airbud's amputation broke shortly after the film came out since paparazzi snagged some pictures of the three-legged Airbud outside of his home going for his nightly walk. At one point, his owner says that that the week paparazzis were swarming Airbud's house were the same week that Princess Diana was killed in her car crash. And he compares the two situations, which is wild. If you're feeling upset that Airbud was pretty much shunned from his own franchise after his illness, Fear not, because he was keeping himself very busy during this time. Buddy and Kevin did lots of school visits where Airbud would come for an assembly and he would show off his skills and make the kids laugh. Airbud had become a piece of childhood empowerment because he'd faced adversity, he had lost his leg, but he was still shooting baskets, which makes me wanna cry. Airbud actually did in fact have puppies of his own. He became a father uh, and his baby mama, his name was Taffy, skank ass bitch. And so if you're paying attention, basically what that means is Airbud has had sex. Airbud literally got laid in his final freaking days, y'all. As a little bit more time went on, Airbud had his annual checkup and they found a large amount of cancer in him, which makes me wanna cry. He was doing an interview with Kevin Zegers, who was the kid in the first movie, and during this interview, he had a seizure, was taken to the hospital, and was pretty much on the decline ever since then. He was blind in one of his eyes, he couldn't play any of his sports, and it was looking like it was going to be the end for Airbud. On February 10th, of 1998, Airbud died in his sleep due to the complications of his cancer. Why are the good ones taken from us? Airbud's oldest son was then named Buddy Jr. and he sort of took on the role of Airbud. He was trained in basketball, he was trained in football and all of the different sports, and he toured the country doing those sports for kids and for audiences across the world. The final chapter of Airbud's book is written in the POV of his children where they talk about how inspiring their dad is and how they wish that they could have met him but he died too soon. They also talk about how amazing Kevin DeChico is and how he's the best owner ever and deserves all the success in the world, but like, he was the one that freaking wrote the book. I ain't fallen for it, Kevin. After Buddy's death, DeChico left Disney and left the production of the next Airbud film so he could focus on his family and sort of get away from Disney's cash grabbing. Disney went through with their plans of creating a franchise surrounding Airbud with very little regard for the actual Buddy who had originated the character. Airbud's death was obviously devastating for so many people. He touched many, many lives, mine included. However, However, the death of a legend was not about to stop Disney from getting another freaking check, so less than six months after Airbud freaking bit the dust. Chapter 4 Golden Receiver. In 1998, Disney released the highly anticipated sequel to the first Airbud movie called Airbud Golden Receiver. 
This is obviously the football movie. Since Buddy was sick and slowly dying during the production of this movie, the role of Airbud was filled by six other golden retrievers. Kevin DeChico, who's Airbud's owner, was not involved in the production of this movie at all. He stepped away so he could take care of Airbud. However, in this movie and all of the sequels, he is given writing credits since he created the character of Airbud, which I find offensive. But at least he's getting recognition from this, and at least maybe getting some profit from this. As soon as the movie starts and they show Airbud, you see that the dog that is playing Airbud is nowhere as near charismatic as the original. When they show the golden retriever playing sports, he seems lost on the field. He has no idea what's going on. When we watch the original Airbud movie and we see actual Buddy playing basketball, it feels like something he was born to do. But then when we tune into this freaking movie and we see whoever the hell this is doing basketball, it feels like something they were trained to do. Hashtag not my Airbud. From this point on, every single Airbud sequel does this thing where they introduce a babbling character whose goal is to kidnap Airbud. In this movie, our villains are two circus people who are trying to kidnap animals around the world with interesting talents. They just sort of like appear at random moments, talk in an accent which may be offensive. Hello children and welcome to Natalia's amazing and stupendous animal circus. And then they just like run around and scream and act really dumb. Something really exciting about this movie is that Josh's mom gets a love interest. He actually sticks around for all of the sequels, which is a nice status quo change for the series. Airbud joins the team and the Timberwolves suddenly start winning every game. And the justification is that Airbud is amazing, when in reality, I don't think that's freaking fair. First of all, Airbud can run away freaking faster than anybody. You look at him on the field and he's like, and everyone else can't even freaking catch up. Second of all, I just feel like there is a hesitancy to freaking tackle Airbud. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no golden retriever. That there's a golden receiver. During one of the scenes, they do dog pile on Airbud and they shatter all of his bones. In the final 20 minutes of the movie, Airbud is kidnapped by the babbling idiot villains, but then immediately escapes because, like, a monkey opened the door. Airbud races his way back to the final game and the Timberwolves win. I just gotta say, Rish, Chase, Zach, or Chance, if you watching this, you better watch your freaking back. No, I'm just kidding. It's been like 20 years, so I know that they're all dead. Overall, I think this movie was decreased in quality. It was a lot harder to get through, and it wasn't that freaking good. I give this movie a three out of five. The movie's about a golden, but it came in bronze. Chapter five, World Pup. <laughs> World Pup is the first movie in the Airbud series to be released straight to video, and all of the sequels after this are also released straight to video. And you can freaking tell, because these movies are freaking awful. First of all, this movie starts with Josh's mom getting married, which was super, super exciting, but then they cut to the wedding, and you see this random bitch. Yeah, that's right. They recasted Josh's freaking mom. I know, I, I can't deal with it. And to put salt in the wound, this girl don't even freaking look the same at all. Hashtag justice for Jackie in the comments. So one of the most upsetting things about this movie is the fact that Airbud actually finds love in this movie um, and he has children. So here's the thing, right? If you're paying attention, that means, canonically, Airbud has had freaking sex. The way that it's introduced is that this rich English family moves in down the street and they own a golden retriever who Airbud like stalkingly stares at. And since they don't talk, you immediately think that he wants to sleep with her even though he's a dog. The narrative is that Airbud is like randomly leaving the house at night. Like he's crawling out the window and disappearing and no one knows where he's going. All the characters are like, what is Airbud doing? Like, I wonder if he has a secret. And you don't know what it is, but it's implied that he's going to go hook up with the other dog. And the thing is, they never even like announce the pregnancy. It's never like one moment where it's like, she's having puppies or like, Airbud is, he showed us that he's a father. He showed us an ultrasound. Like there's none of that. Literally just out of nowhere, it's the climax. And it's just announced that like she's in labor and they're delivering the puppies. What is it? Buddy, buddy what's wrong? Oh, buddy, take it easy. Hurry, hurry, it's happening. What's going on? 
think part of the reason why they didn't announce that Airbud was having kids or make it like part of the narrative that like she was pregnant is because they wanted to like stray from the whole like Airbud had sex allegation. But like if that's the case, she should have just been pregnant at the start of the film. Do you know what I mean? But knowing at the start of the movie there were no babies and at the end of the movie there were babies, that means somewhere in the middle they were banging. I'm sorry, I just, I can't. And to make matters worse, they even give Josh a love interest. She's some girl with a terrible British accent. First of all, my name is Emma, not Babe. What has gotten into you? You have to forgive me. We're absolutely higgledy-piggledy right now. The thing is, she doesn't not sound British, but she also doesn't not sound like a freaking idiot. Josh, the game! This character's name is Emma, and she's on the soccer team. In order to impress her, Josh joins the soccer team, and then Airbud also joins once they find out he's amazing. She's the owner of Airbud's like slutty baby mama, and so it's the thing where they're like, wow, like, what are the odds of that happening? And you're like, I know what the odds are. We, I see two hoes right there. I wasn't a big fan of the romantic subplot between Emma and Josh, but it did feel like a nice change from the other movies. And so I was kind of excited for Emma to stick around. However, she isn't in any of the other movies. She's never mentioned again. So I think it's safe to assume she was deported. My biggest gripe with this movie is the fact that they play like generic early 2000s pop songs like every five minutes. I will never let it go. The stupid villain of this movie is a dog catcher whose plan is to kidnap Airbud, which is really original. In the final 20 minutes of the movie, Airbud is kidnapped, but he escapes in time to help the Timberwolves win the big game. They race back to the soccer game and they hype up the fact that, like, there's only a few minutes, like, we have no time, what are we gonna do? Josh! The game! We're gonna be late, we gotta go. But they did have time to put all the puppies into jerseys. The movie ends with Airbud, like, winning the World Cup. Overall, I would say this movie is pretty freaking awful. The movie was hard to watch, it was hard to get through, there was lots of stupid plot lines, stupid characters, and terrible, terrible plot decisions. And Airbud had sex. So I don't know what else to say. I give this movie a 2 out of 5 because Airbud Airbusted inside of another dog. Nothing but magic, Frank. Nothing but Airbud. Chapter 6, 7th Inning Fetch. So in 2002, Disney released the fourth film in the ABCU titled Airbud Seventh Inning Fetch. This is the baseball movie, as expected. The biggest thing about this movie by far is the fact that Josh leaves. Based on the decline of the second and third movie and also being a lot older, it would make sense that the actor for Josh would be wanting to leave the franchise. Instead of just writing the character out and saying he went away to school or he's at summer camp or something, they actually give him a very emotional send off. Don't worry, mom, okay? I'm gonna be fine. He even comes back for the final game at the end of the movie, which is exciting. From this point on, the lead character is Andrea, who is Josh's younger sister. I was prepared to hate Andrea. I was prepared to be annoyed by her or think that she was stupid. And during the first parts of the movie, I was like, oh, here we freaking go. Cause she was freaking annoying. Andrea and her friend try out for the baseball team and Andrea is absolutely terrible. She struggles at everything, but her friend is really, really good. And so her friend campaigns for her and she's like, I'm not gonna be on the team if you don't put my friend Andrea on the team. What about Andrea? We joined together. She's my best friend. BFF. Best friends forever. So despite sucking ass, Andrea's on the team and then Airbud starts to train her and she starts to get better and she starts to get more confident. Something really exciting about this movie is that the original actress for Josh's mom, Mrs. Fram, is back. Her and her new husband just had a baby and so there's a new addition to the family. I really like the way this all developed. I like the way that Andrea was feeling like she wasn't getting attention anymore with Josh leaving but also with the new baby. At the beginning of the movie, everyone's there for like a picnic and then they cut to some man and you're like who the hell is that man and then they're like this is the stepdad from the last two films i felt a little bit disrespected that they thought i wouldn't notice that they recasted 
um, but it's fine. There's one moment where in the background you can see a wedding picture that's like framed in their house. And in this picture, you see the original actress for the mom, but then the new version of the stepdad neither of which were there for the on-screen wedding in World Pup. There is a piece of good news about this movie, which is the fact that Airbud's baby mama is nowhere to be seen. She's never even mentioned. I think it's safe to assume that she probably died in labor. Since this is the baseball movie, you might be wondering to yourself, like, how does the dog freaking play baseball? In my head, I was really nervous because I was like, oh, like, obviously a dog can't, like, pitch a ball and he also can't swing a bat. So does that mean that Airbud's just gonna be like on the outfield, like catching the ball in his mouth? I'm like, that's boring. But no, he literally holds a freaking bat in his mouth and he freaking swings it. So the bumbling idiots in this movie are a pair of scientists who own a raccoon. Basically what they're trying to do is, is they are trying to kidnap Airbud, obviously, and they're trying to extract like his sports gene, so then they can genetically modify other dogs to be good at sports. The plan is to slowly kidnap all of Airbud's children, then Airbud himself, and then steal their genes. and then they're gonna make their own air, but I don't understand if I'm honest. At the beginning of the movie, it's established that each of Airbud's children has like inherited one of his sports abilities. So what this implies is, is that Airbud is the avatar of sports playing animals. In the final 20 minutes of the movie, Airbud is kidnapped, but he escapes in time to help the Timberwolves win the big game. Andrea like, shakes her butt before scoring a home run and winning the game for the team. Airbud wins the World Series and then the movie is over. <laughs> Since the second and third movies were slowly going downhill, I was very nervous about this movie, but it was actually very watchable. It was very, very fun. I loved the characters. I loved the change of pace. Four out of five. It's all downhill from here. Airbud has done it again. Chapter seven, Spike's Back. In 2003, Disney released the final Airbud movie. The bad news is, is that this is the worst one by freaking far. This movie starts on the last day of school before summer vacation. Airbud is running through the streets to pick up Andrew from school. And when he gets there, we see this bitch. We finally come around to the idea of Andrea being our lead character. And just like that, they recast her to a girl who looks and acts nothing like the original. If you're paying attention, this means that every single character in the Fram family has been recast at some point besides Josh, who refuses to ever show his face in this franchise again. And then later there's like a family breakfast going on and the stepdad has also been recasted a second freaking time. But at this point, Jackie Fram is in it for the Long haul. She was gone for one movie, but she's sticking around. She's even in a handful of the Air Buddies movies. If you're wondering, Air Bud's children are not in this movie and they are never mentioned again, so I think it's safe to assume that they were racist on the set. Andrea's best friend moves to California and she's very sad that she won't be able to see her anymore. Saying goodbye, okay, as hard as I try. She tries to save up money to buy a plane ticket, but she's broke. So what she decides to do is, is to join the volleyball team because the championship game is in California. If you're wondering about the volleyball in this movie, I just have to say it's freaking awful. In all of the other movies, I feel like it's somewhat believable that Airbud is playing the title sport. However, in this movie, it doesn't feel like Airbud is playing volleyball. There are some scenes where it feels like they have like an intern like lifting him up so he can like hit it down. In general, it's just not fun to watch. The villains in this movie are, uh, let me check my notes really quick. Two babbling idiots whose plan is to kidnap Airbud. The bad guy's plan is to kidnap Airbud because he is able to jump and do obstacle courses. And there's an in-town museum where there's a very expensive diamond that is guarded by lasers. This literally sounds fake. And so they wanna kidnap Airbud, bring him to this museum, and have him jump through the lasers. 
so they can steal the diamond. In the final 20 minutes of the movie, everybody is kidnapped, but he escapes in time to help the Timberwolves win the big game. The movie ends with Andrea being reunited with her best friend and Airbud playing in a professional volleyball game. Despite all of these movies following the exact same formula to a T, I felt like this one was the worst by far because all of the other movies at least had something different that we could look forward to. But this movie, it had a freaking nothing. It was absolutely freaking brutal. Don't watch this one. One out of five, I wanted to die. Chapter 8, Air Buddies. I feel like most people who are a little bit younger might be more familiar with the Air Buddies franchise. I'm somebody who grew up watching Air Bud and loved Air Bud, but I do feel like the Air Buddies was something that was more tailored to me when I was younger. The Air Buddies is a spinoff that directly follows Air Bud's children after the events of the Air Bud series. The series pretty much retcons everything that happens after the events of Golden Receiver. All of Air Bud's children have different names, they have a different origin story, they even have a different mother. But that all changed the day Molly. A brown-eyed gal with golden locks moved in across the street. And Buddy fell head over tail for her. They do reference all of the Air Bud movies and all of the sports and even show clips from those movies, but they don't regard any of the things revolving Air Bud's children or his slutty baby mama. As you probably already know, Cornfield is home to the world-famous Air Bud, a true sports legend whose first love had always been the game. Andrea is now in college, and the main character is Noah, who was the freaking baby from the fourth movie. If you try to figure out a timeline where Josh is in college, and Andrea is in college, and the baby is old enough to be however old the baby is supposed to freaking be. I do know one thing, and it's that no matter how much time has gone by, Airbud should be freaking dead. But our girl Jackie Fram is there. Boom, boom, boom. The big difference between Airbud and Air Buddies is the fact that in the Air Buddies, first of all, they're babies, but second of all, they speak. Fireball, put a muzzle on it. They'll hear us. Dudes, if we want to go to the game, we're gonna have to get by Niggles. Words of wisdom, Mud Bud. They make the terrible creative decision of having Air Bud speak in this movie, and it makes me want to die. Got to find the pups before they do. They give him like this old man voice, which makes me really uncomfortable. These Air Buddies movies are pumped out like it's nobody's freaking business. They've been to space. They've been superheroes. They've probably been to the frickin' resurrection, I don't know. In general, the Air Buddies movies are a lot more kiddish, and they're also pumped out a lot more frequently. They don't follow any through line, the Frams are not in a lot of the later movies, and the Buddies just sort of do their own thing. I've seen a couple of the Air Buddies movies from when I was younger, and I do think that they're very not good. However, for this video, I did not specifically watch any of the Air Buddies movies for one reason in particular. Chapter 9 controversy. Okay, so if you're wondering about what this big controversy is, um, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. They killed the buddies. They killed the buddies. During the filming of Snow Buddies, which is a movie where they're in freaking Antarctica, they were bringing these golden retriever puppies into the snow, and the puppies got sick, and a lot of them died. Close to 30 dogs were sick during production of Snow Buddies, and five of them died throughout filming, and overall, it was a nightmare. From all of the research I've done in the Air Bud movies and the other Air Buddies movies, there were no dogs that were killed, no dogs that were harmed, and pretty much all of them had the like, no dogs were harmed in the making of this movie. From my understanding, The Snow Buddies is the only movie that does not have that certification because of all of the freaking harm that was done. So due to that, I hold a lot of reservations when it comes to watching the Air Buddies movies. It feels like a morally corrupt decision, so I'm not gonna do it. But also, they look god-awful, and I feel like it's not worth my freaking time. Chapter 10, The End of Airbud. There has not been a new Air Bud movie in over 20 years since the release of Spike's Back. Even the Air Buddies has entered its 10th year without a sequel. There is a part of me that thinks the only reason we haven't had another Air Bud movie in so long is because the writers couldn't think of any good dog sports puns. But I've been brainstorming and I have some potential ideas for an Air Bud sequel. First of all, we've got Air Bud track and fetch. He's in the track and field team, and so he can either like run on the track and like jump hurdles. What's the thing where you throw the ball? He could do that, he could be like, whew. Then I have an idea for like a snowboarding movie called Air Bud Snoot Boarding. He can like strap himself on there and do it. I think that'd be pretty sick. Then we got Air Bud Dog 
dodgeball. It's a dodgeball movie. Um, so basically what he would do is, is I think that he would be on the dodgeball team and they would throw the ball. And I guess if he touched it, he would be out. I thought he would hit it with his nose. We're gonna workshop that one. Airbud Wiffle Ball. I don't even know what Wiffle Ball is, but I think that it's a sport for kids that's simulating baseball, and I guess they've already done that. But you know what? You could do a spinoff where like, Josh is back and he has a son and he's teaching how to do Wiffle Ball. I, I don't freaking know. It's just a pun, I don't know. Finally, this is probably the worst one by far. I'm thinking what we could do is, is we could put Airbud in the Olympics and he can be on the toboggan team and the movie can be called Airbud Tubdoggin. Wait, what is a toboggan? I don't even know. What is a toboggan? It is a long, narrow sled. Oh, so that's not a team sport. So I guess that Airbud could just run and then jump on the toboggan and go down the hill like professionally, I, I don't freaking know. I know that we haven't talked about the actual Airbud in quite a while, but if you're wondering about how his legacy has played out in the modern day, from my understanding, Kevin DeChico was still doing events with Golden Retrievers where they would shoot basketballs. If you look online, there's tons of videos of him at different sports arenas, like entertaining crowds. Certainly like the focus and determination here of Airbud. Doesn't look like he has any pregame jitters. Nice job, love his approach. Looks like he can catch, track him down. I like the range. Well done by Air Bud. He's been popularized in over 15 major motion picture films. The super athletic golden retriever, Buddy, a.k.a. Air Bud. Today, the Air Buddies, along with owner Kevin DeChico, will demonstrate their legendary football catching abilities. Touchdown, Airbud. It's unclear if these golden retrievers are the children of the original Airbud or if they're just random ass golden retrievers. But based on my internet research, there aren't any recent clips of Airbud at any sporting arena or any event, so I can only assume that the character has been retired, but that may not be true. The people who made the Airbud movies went on to make a production company called Airbud Entertainment where they make terrible dog led movies. One of my favorite movies that came from this production was the Pup Star series, which is a terrible dog singing contest. I remember when I first met you, you were like a dream, a dream come true. Things got crazy and I couldn't get back. Would you leave me so broken hearted? There's even an episode of BoJack Horseman where they use the Airbud International Airport as a sight gag. This next part's gonna sound fake, but there was an entire Australian spin-off that was planned. Based on what I've seen people say online and based on the production notes, the movie was gonna focus on Airbud befriending a kangaroo and learning how to do rugby, but that feels like it's too good to be true. The movies were canceled in pre-production, so we'll never know joy. I think the Airbud series is very important because they were based off of a real dog and his real life abilities. This one dog launched an entire movie series, an entire spin-off, an entire production company, and it feels really sad that Disney has sort of given up on this legacy, even his owner has given up on the legacy, and it feels like it's sort of just slowly puttered out over two decades. If you want my opinion on how Airbud can return in the year 2023, my answer is Disney+. Plus. I think it could be really fun to have like an animated show about the character of Airbud and his variety of skills. I think you could take a page out of Phineas and Ferb's book and like do the same thing every episode, but like slightly different. Maybe there's a group of kids that are always going on different types of adventures and Airbud is always there to save the day or showcase a new ability that nobody knew about. And I like to think there's a little bit more gas in the tank. I like to think that maybe they could do a TV show, maybe they could do some sort of other spinoff or relaunch the character. But also, no one cares except for me. So who am I to tell Disney what to do? Right now, Buddy the Dog remains on doggy death row at Brook City Base. But this morning, city attorneys suddenly agreed to let Buddy live while courts review his death sentence. 